welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I made a video a few weeks ago about a radio similar to this, but in a different form factor. Now if you saw that video, you would have seen how bad it was and it just wasn't worth the money. However, I recently received this radio, a USDX Plus version 2. Now I wasn't holding out much hope for this radio due to past experience, but after playing around with the radio, I was actually quite surprised that I was able to make an HF contact. And if that can happen, it means it's doing what it's supposed to, right? Now, one of the striking features of this radio is its small size and it has an inbuilt battery, which of course is rechargeable. Now it's advertised as an eight band all mode SDR transceiver. However, you will not see any colorful waterfalls or scopes, but you do have a two line LCD. And while testing this radio, I had to remind myself just how much it costs. And that's around 120 UK pounds or 150 US dollars. So don't expect build quality of a top tier radio manufacturer, but something this small and that transmits and receive had to be worth a punt. The specified output power is between three and five watts. And I guess that's depending on whether you're running from the internal battery or from a 13.8 volt supply. Now, later in this video, I will demonstrate the exact RF power output on each band from running with battery or an external supply. So keep watching. Now, this radio has minimal amount of buttons on the front panel, but the menu button does take you into an area where you can fine tune some of the settings, such as mic levels, noise reduction, blanker, attenuator, and so forth. Now the radio states it's all mode, although the front panel mode button allows you to change between lower sideband, upper sideband, CW. If you want to change to FM or AM, then you need to change this within the menu. Luckily, there are not many menu options to go through. The front panel does hold an internal forward facing speaker, but in my opinion, the audio from the included speaker mic sounds a lot more natural. Now on the rear of the radio, we find the power switch, a dedicated charge port, an external power socket for powering from a power supply or battery, the speaker mic connection, and a cat control connection, which I haven't tested just yet. Of course, we also find the antenna connection, which as you can see here, is a BNC type socket. So here we have the radio connected to a dummy load via my power meter, now the radio itself is in CW mode so that we can see the key down power output. Now the first test will be with an external 13.8 volt supply connected to the radio. So first up is 80 meters and this shows a power output of 4.5 watts. Moving on to 60 meter band and we see an output power of 4.9 watts. Moving up to 40 meters and we see an output of 4.6 watts. Now at this point I changed to LSB and talking to the microphone. We can see here that when using voice, we can see peaks of around two to three watts. Now back over to CW and then moving up to the 30 meter band, we can see an output power of around 3.8 watts. Up to 20 meters on 14 megs and we see an output of 4.6 watts. 17 meters produces a similar output as the other bands, uh, which is showing just over four watts. The 15 meter band shows an output power of just over four watts and the radio doesn't appear to support 12 meter band on 24 megs. So now we just jump up to 10 meters on 28 megahertz and we see an output power of around 3.2 watts. So let's just quickly run that test again, but using the radio's internal battery. 80 meters, we see 3.6 watts, 60 meters, 3.8 watts, 40 meters, 3.7 watts, 30 meters, 2.8 watts, 20 meters, 3.8 watts, 17 meters, 3 watts, 15 meters, 3.7 watts, and 10 meters, 2.6 watts. So overall, with the internal battery, it's not a massive amount of difference, and with a good antenna, you could easily make some contacts. Now, talking of which, here's a contact that I made using an external power supply and my home antenna, which is an N-fed half-wave. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Go ahead. 
Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. The name here is Matt. The name's Matt Mexico Alpha Tango. QSL? Yes, it's Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Delta Quebec Whiskey, M Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. And yes, the name here is Matt, Mexico Alpha Tango. QSL? Yeah, okay, Matt, thank you. I've got the call now. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. I can't give you my ship's address, but you know, about uh, 4 by 5 a 4 by 5 at the moment, uh, Matt. Uh, I'll give you my name here. Yeah, no problem, no problem at all. Yeah, you're a nice, uh, you're a nice five eight five nine here, and uh, I'm running QRP about three point five watts, around three and a half watts, uh, just running from an experimental radio uh, that I'm just testing. But uh, I'll let you carry on. I know it's probably quite hard work to hear me, so uh, thanks very much for the contact. Uh, this is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yep, 73s, bye-bye, have a lovely afternoon, M0DQW, clear, bye. So there we go, a brief overview of the USDX Plus version 2, 8-band, all-mode HF transceiver. Now I was thinking that if I was to pair this with a small 49 to 1 transformer, 20 meters of lightweight wire, throw it in a backpack, it would make an awesome little portable radio kit for not a lot of money. Now I know there are going to be a lot of you viewers out there thinking this is just another cheap clone radio that comes out of a searching country. But what you have to remember here is the price. For the price, I think I can put up with the speaker clicks, the not so good sounding audio, the lack of power, the build quality. Making a contact with something like this for me is actually quite exciting because I didn't expect it to work. Now we all know the history behind this design or at least the original design and how it's grown into its current state. But also remember, this is an experimenter's project, not an off-the-shelf singing and all-dancing ham radio transceiver. If you own one of these, let me know how well you get along with it. What's your furthest contact? That'd be really interesting. And also what antennas you use with it. It'd be quite interesting to know whether you use it with massive antennas or something small and portable. Anyway, until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed already, please consider it as I make lots of content like this.